Hi everybody, Chris Petra here. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. We're having a great time here. We're doing watercolors. We're going to do this beautiful barn scene out in the uh, farmlands, the countryside. Many of you, you've been out into the countryside. You've had a great time out there. You know, you've seen the cows and the horses and the fields, the beautiful barns, the silos, the country stores, the antique shops. You've done it all. This is the type of painting you really want to enjoy and have a fun time with. So if you can get back in that mindset of being out there and traveling around, doing some sightseeing and so forth, we, we're we going to have a great time doing it. We're just going to think of those thoughts, those happy, good feelings of being out in the beautiful countryside and um, painting this barn. We're going to show you how to do all the entire painting from start to finish. We're going to do a, a pencil sketch first, simple pencil sketch. And then we're going to do our washes over the top of that. We're going to do a light, beautiful, preliminary wash first, glazing technique. So here we're doing the glazing technique. We're going to cover the whole sheet of paper with beautiful, colorful bl blue and golds and reds and purples and greens washes. To, we're going to do the whole painting, uh, except for the barn. We're going to leave that the white paper. Let that dry 100%, and then we're going to come back and do our darker washes over the top. So you're going to see how we do all this. I cover all the fine, you know, fine details. We, we cover all the, the oodles of details you need to get good at watercolor. And also, we're just chock full of great information in general for watercolor. So if you're a watercolor artist, have a great time with this painting. Join along with us. If you're brand new, welcome. Thanks for coming by. I know many of you, many of you are joining this Extreme Beginners series. I want to thank you for that, and you're in good hands. I'm going to make sure that you get all the details you need, all the methods and techniques and processes you need for watercolor to get yourself started properly, and then as well carrying it through and getting good at watercolor. It takes a little bit of time. You know, you can't expect to get great overnight, but it, if you follow along on each video as we go, month after month, and week after week, month after month, and even year after year, it takes years to get good at watercolor, don't expect it to happen overnight, but the more you practice, the better you're going to get. So if you stick with us every week practicing these paintings we're doing and all the details, you'll get really good at watercolor. So I promise you that. Just stick with us. Keep watching over and over and over again, and you'll get better. So let's get started. This is going to be the painting we're going to do. Gorgeous barn, pine trees. We do a maple tree over here, some distant hills in the distance grass in the front here and beautiful sky washes. You're going to do all this. Stick with us. We'll be right back. I'm just going to take a quick break and we'll get started. Okay, we'll be right back and happy painting. All right, we saw the finished painting everybody. So we're just getting back started up again. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take a um, pencil and just uh, mark around the outside of my tape. So I have some masking tape around my paper. So the first thing I want to do is sort of make it a little bit easier so you can kind of see my borders here of my rectangle. So I'm just going to go around with my a darker uh, pencil line. And then uh, we're going to start out by creating a simple uh, farmhouse scene where you're just going to have a real fun time enjoying the beauty of watercolor, the washes of the paint in the water. And before we do that, we're just going to sketch in a basic uh, barn. So this would be like anywhere out in the countryside, a beautiful sunny day. We're going to have a big blue sky here, simple blue sky. And we're going to have just some simple shapes too. So you saw the finished painting, you see how it looks, so we're just going to kind of break this down a little more. So basically we're looking at, we're going to have a really beautiful sky, so we're going to leave our, we're going to break our painting down into quarters, so we're going to say top, bottom, halfway point, quarter point, three quarter point, and top. So basically we're dividing our rectangle into quarters. So if this was uh, an inch, it would be a quarter inch, a half inch, three quarters of an inch, or one inch. Or if you just want to look at, it, look at it as, you know, breaking it down into parts, it's four parts, and you have one part, two parts, three parts, and four parts, all equally divided. 
So that's how we're going to uh, basically divi divide up our horizontal lines. So the first line we're going to do is going to be our basically our ground line, our the the line where our grass is going to be about here. And then from there we're going to build up our shape of our barn. So you can go really simple. I might even just sketch it in with this simple pencil here. So here I want to do a, a simple um, let's do this. Let's do a simple a rectangle shape here. So you can kind of see that. That's a simple rectangle shape. It's not really a square. It's a little bit elongated so that's basically a rectangle right and then we're just going to do let's go halfway on that rectangle make a mark halfway and you can simply um, use a ruler and measure measure these things here so I'm working with a 9 by 12 watercolor paper so 9 by 12 so now if you use the same measurements I'm using here as I go here, you should be able to get the same uh, scale of the farmhouse here. So this rectangle is two inches wide by uh, an inch high. So this is one inch high here, and this is two inches wide here from here to here. So this is something where you could use a ruler if you want to, just to get the basic overall um, scale of the painting as you're going to create it. And then we're going to do a simple gable roof like this, which is basically a pyramid on top of that, like so. So you can kind of see that, right? That's not really... You're just taking that center line and moving it up here, and you're going to make a pyramid on top of this. So really so far if we're looking at that, if we're looking at this in simple terms we've just made a inch by two inch rectangle like so an inch by two inch rectangle and then we we could even measure this and say how tall is that gable it's one and a quarter inches so one and a quarter inches up here is the tip of the gable and that is at the center point of two inches which is one inch so you can make a mark at one inches and go up here and say that's one inch and this is inch in a quarter high and you drop down two two lines on an angle right to this point here and that gives you your gable roof with your rectangular shape here and then we're going to put a uh, window up here like so so that's the first part of the barn. Now the second part, we're going to create another roof over here which starts right at the peak of this gable. This would be the actual ridge of the top of the roof. And we're going to come across this way. And that's going to be here. So basically this is another triangle or pyramid like this and this will be the roof over here so these are going to be shingles on this side of the roof here there's shingles up here on this side and this side but we don't see those really because we're looking just at the gable end of the roof and then up up here we're going to go about halfway and we're just going to make that a small bit of uh, wall let's call that a half an inch half an inch of a wall here like that okay and then let's go so we'll continue so we're just going to use this so far let's do that so now we're going to do this here again this is the other roof here like that then halfway there we go up just a little bit an inch not even an inch. Let's take a look at this and see what we're doing. Uh, half inch. Half inch here. 
from this point of this roof here, or the peak of the gable, half inch up. So now you take your time with this. Don't feel stressed. Don't get worried. Take your time. Take breaks. Maybe you're just going to do this portion right here and take a break because, you know, I'm measuring here. I, you know, I do this for a living. I do architecture and I do measuring and estimating and construction. So I'm working with rulers and measurements all day long. Um, and then I do my artwork at night and on the weekends. And uh, so a half inch here. And then we're going to take that line and we're going to go all the way across and make a large barn across this whole bit of um, paper here. So let's take this across. I'm just going to go by feel and say, how much is that going to be? I would say that looks pretty good. That's about three times the size of this if I had to scale it. So that's two, two, three times, two, and then another, yep, yeah, about that. Let's leave it a little bit. All right, so we're going to leave it about here. Just right about there. That's good. Okay, so that's going to be our roof up here, like so. And you can use a ruler and just go across. And like that. And then we're going to drop this line down all the way down to the ground level. We drew that ground level there. So we have the ground level here. And then we're going to draw another part of the barn over here which is on an angle. And let's also remember that we have a hill here. The hill comes up here a little more. It banks up like this. There's a tree here about three quarters of the way. So not quite halfway, three quarters. So you could even say this is, let's measure this just to get a reference point. This barn is six inches wide. Six inches wide is this barn right here. That tree is about three and a half to four inches. We're going to have a tree here. So now this tree is here. Okay, so we're just making a a rough indication of the tree here, like that. Then this drops down the ground level here. We see there's a concrete foundation here. Maybe it's stonework or concrete or s some s cement blocks. And then from there, we have another bit of barn here. Now this part is a little bit challenging. You, you want to make sure you get this part here. So you want to take this and say, okay, how much is this? The height of this from the ground up, like here. So we're going to say, that, oh, it's a half an inch. So we're going to go out and say, okay, half an inch. So we're going to go out here about an inch and a quarter um, how much? inch and a half maybe, inch and a half, we make a mark here, inch and a half out, this way. Then we go up on the end of that half an inch, like so, half an inch, like that. And then we just make an angle, like so. And this is the other section of the barn, like this. And there you have it. And then there's a door here, very faintly, but there is a door, like that. And then there's some distant hills back here, so you're going to want to make those in there. And there's some more distant hills back here. This is farmlands, so this is very flat level ground, where there's all farms and fields and crops growing, and there's all kinds of cool stuff out here. There's cows and horses and fun stuff. So let's get into this feeling. Does that make sense? Kind of feel like you're out in the countryside. You're out like in the farmlands. You're kind of like driving through. You might be hitting some uh, antique shops. You're having fun. You're seeing barns, silos. You're seeing cows and horses. And if you get that feel of being out in the countryside, 
this painting will go much better if you can kind of get that feel, thinking in your mind and kind of getting into the the atmosphere of that in your mind. And then, you know, you'll you'll have a fun, more fun time with this and it'll be a little easier to create this painting. So, all right, we have the painting pretty much, the drawing. Prior to the painting here, we always want to do our sketch work and get our our um, sketch lines, our drawing, our drawing in, like so. So we have this here. We have a large tree here. Then we're going to have another bit of trees over here. Let's do these. These are more like pine trees, so these are more straight, like that. And they go up kind of high. And these are pine trees, so they don't... Their branches are more level, like so. So we're going to make the more branches are going to be more level, like so. Like that. And there's maybe another one over here, too. Another happy uh, pine tree over here like that. And you just kind of sketch it in a little bit, but you remember if we're talking pine trees, pine trees are going to be more um, the branches are going to be more like this, kind of more level. Can you see that? They're more level like this. At the top they sometimes do this, but more or less they they do that. So that's your pine tree over here. So you can say this is a, more of a pine tree here. And then over here you have more like a maple or a um, mahogany tree, whatever it is. And this one here is more... This The branches are more at a 45 degree angle. So you can kind of see that. Some of these branches go out like this, but for the most part you're at 45 degree angles with your branches and a couple come down here and there once in a while but you're more or less at 45 degree angles these are 45 degrees here 45 degrees here this one's straight up vertical so this is a plumb line or vertical and then you got 45's off of that that would be 90 degrees 90 degrees across this way and then your pine trees are a lot 90 degrees your branches, sometimes you know a little less. But again, your your branches on the pine trees are more like this, kind of going up like so. And at the top they kind of look more like this tree, which is like a maple tree, let's say, and then you got your but your your lines on your maple tree are more at 45 degree angles. So I didn't mean to go off on a tangent, but this is important. We're doing trees here, right? Does that make sense? I'm trying to give you all the oodles of um, details here so you kind of can get a feel for what we're doing. You know, more of a maple tree here, you're doing your 45 degree angles, and then here your pine trees, you're doing more 90, 90 degree angles from your trunk. So your tree trunk, we're talking the tree trunk is here going up vertical, 90 degrees, and then 45 degrees would be your branches. And then here, your pine tree, your um, trunk of your tree is up, going vertical like this, straight plumb vertical. And then you have your branches going at about 90 degrees from that vertical line. That's really just a basic idea of it, but you can already see we have our sketch done. And now we're pretty much home free. We have some basic sketch work done, and then we can just paint from here and have a great time. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. And I always want to thank you for stopping by. And if it's your first time here, welcome, everybody. This is an Extreme Beginners video. So when we're doing Extreme Beginners video uh, series, we always say, you know, welcome. You're just at the beginning of your journey. You're going to try paintings like this. You're going to do more simple paintings. You're going to do more difficult ones than this. But you're always trying just to get into it, learn the the washes, learn the colors, learn the sketching, practice your drawing all the time, try to get 10-15 minutes in a day. It's a long process. You'll become really you'll become really good at watercolor, but it takes a lot of time. It takes years to get good at it, to be honest with you. So don't let anyone tell you you're supposed to be good at watercolors after painting six months. It, it doesn't really work that way. It took me years and years just to get basic fundamentals down. So I've been doing this like almost 20 years. You got to imagine, you know, 20 years I've been painting a lot. So, and drawing. 
So it's going to take you a while. Take your time. Have a fun time at it. Slow and steady wins the race. That's the basic thing. Just go slow and steady. Get your 10, 15 minutes in a day of drawing. Just grab a piece of paper and draw something. Doesn't could be anything. And then, you know, you do that every day. And then you do these on the weekends when we're working together here and you'll be fine. So we'll come right back in just a few minutes. And uh, I'm glad you're here again. And thanks for coming by. And uh, we'll get started on the painting portion now. And we'll have a lot of fun with the painting. And you'll see it's not going to be too difficult. We're going to use simple colors and just get a basic uh, wash of paint or two on this paper. So we'll be right back. I'm just going to take a quick break if that's okay. And I'll be right back. All right, so we're back again, and uh, we're going to start our painting portion of our beautiful uh, farm scene here. We have a gorgeous barn, a large barn in the countryside, beautiful farm scene here. Um, we're going to do some really interesting washes here. Um, and this is this Extreme Beginner series, so thinking of that, we... Mostly we're using three brushes, you know, on the Extreme Beginners, when I usually do my Extreme Beginner series, we're using a flat brush like this, which is about five-eighths of an inch or approximately half-inch wide flat brush, and then two round brushes. We have the set that we use here is the Prang Oval 16 set. And basically, if you're just new here, thank you for coming by. If this is your first time you ever stopped at this site, at my channel, at Chris Petrie uh, Watercolor on YouTube, Welcome. I'm happy you stopped by. You're going to have fun with watercolors. You're going to learn it a little bit step by step and you'll have a great time at it and you'll make it a part of your life where it's a happy thing. Your watercolors are going to be a happy thing in your life. You'll enjoy it. You'll have fun with it. Of course, we all have stress in our lives. We have family stuff. We have jobs. We have other things that go on in our lives that are stressful. But your happy time is your painting time. So let's have a good time painting and drawing, okay? That's the main thing. You're going to have a happy time, happy painting to everybody as you start out here. If this is your first time here and if you've been here a while already, well, you know, I always tell you happy painting, everybody. And uh, so we're going to basically be using these three type of brushes for the most part. And these are synthetic brushes, which are great when you're just starting out. You don't want brushes that are uh, all natural here because they hold a lot of water. So when you just start out, you want to start out with synthetic brushes, so it almost works out perfect. You don't have to s spend a fortune on brushes because synthetic brushes are less expensive and they don't hold as much water, so you won't be flooding out your paper and making a mess or we're not making a mess in our palette with too much water. So synthetics work great. Now the only thing I have to say is with this painting, it is a little bit of a larger painting. We said this was about a 9 by 12 so I'm going to use one of my brushes I have here, which is a little bit larger. This is like a one-inch brush, um, wide. So if you can get a synthetic brush at some point, you can make do with this one for now. And you can also create this painting smaller if you want. But if you're using all the measurements that I was using with my ruler, you will need to use a larger pad of paper. So remember that. This is the one really important thing I have to mention as we're getting started to do our painting is if you're using a 9 by 12 pad of paper or sheet of paper that's going to work out great with the measurements that we did one inch by two inch right one inch this way two inch this way for the small gable roof and uh, this portion of the barn then over here on this side of the barn we went about five and a half six inches long you can't do that you can't use that same measure you can't use the same measurements if you if you're using a small piece of paper so that's where that is a little bit difficult so if you're going to do this type of painting and you want to use your ruler and measure things you have to use the same larger sh sheet of paper as I'm using if you just want to bypass that and not worry about it then all you have to do is really kind of look at my drawing here and kind of feel it out and say okay I got to make things a little smaller maybe you got to go half of everything I did so if I went a if I went 2 inches wide by one inch is high and you have a really small piece of paper you're working with you might have to go like one inch wide by half inch high can you follow that I'm sure you can if you're good with rulers and good with measurements and things like that you're, you're gonna be okay but if I've confused you enough here already no worries just have a fun time try just drawing it by feel and get it as best you can making it fit into the paper that you have I'm not sure what size paper you have out there so 
don't mean to confuse things. I apologize. I'm sorry. But if you don't have a, a 9 by 12 paper, pad of paper, then just try to look at my drawing and try to draw it and fit it into the into the uh, rectangle, this rectangle space that we do have. Try to fit your drawing in just like I have it here. Really, essentially, if you look at it, you're basically doing quarters, one, one quarter, half, three quarters, full. So you have four sections equally divided in your paper. And then if you do that, and then you just, if you have a smaller paper, you make the four lines equally divided, and then you just say that the barn, the barn here is the two points here. So the barn, the ground level is here, top of the barn is approximately three quarters high, and then you have the other quarter of the sky up top. That's really kind of basics. And then if you go in this way, it's basically thirds. One third, two thirds, three thirds. This third here is the main section of the barn. This section of the barn over here, the smaller section, that's a little bit over here. And this smaller section over here too as well is a little bit beyond this one third line here. But your main barn is in the middle third. One third here, one third, one third. I know I'm making a mess of my tape here. One quarters, half, three quarters, full. You'll find a lot of times with watercolor, with when you're planning out your drawings, it's just all about maybe scaling out things a little bit, you know, quarters and thirds. If you can stick with quarters and thirds with your layout of your painting, you'll be fine. So really you're learning here that you can really just use this one-thirds or quarters. Either way, you can use quarters this way and then use thirds here on the side, this way or this way. That usually works out good. So the only thing here I would say, if you're, you've are you been working with me already, extreme beginners, you have your brushes. I'm just using a wider brush for the sky wash up here. So that's the only thing I'm doing different. And let's get our sky wash going here. Blue. Look at that. Beautiful blue. Wash there. A little bit of blue down here. A little bit of a cerulean blue here. This is like a French ultramarine there. And this is kind of like some purple up here. We might use a little bit of purple. We're going to have fun with this. Let's have some fun with the colors, right? So now if we're going to have fun with our colors, let's um, let's do this. Let's take our clean fresh water. We Our water is just, we just poured fresh clean water in our glass or our canteen or if you have a, a water container, whatever you use, fresh clean water, and then just put some fresh clean water here and there, not everywhere. Maybe use the X pattern like this. Just do this. Put a little bit in the roof area, a little bit in the tree area. A little bit in the ground area, but not everywhere. Just little bits of wetness. You want to just dampen your paper a little bit along the... Like that. That's all you have to do. Not too much water. Once you do that, you're going to have a great time. You just pick up your blue and just get your blue wash on there. Just put the water on. Get a little purple in there too. Okay, don't worry about it if it's flowing around and doing its own thing. That's what watercolor does, and that's what you want it to do. So I'm going to put some blue there, some blue there. It's going to go into the roofs a little bit. And so you can just see I'm taking my blue and just bringing it down. I'm leaving the barn, though. The white paper but the roof has got blue in it too the sky color but that's about it we want to leave the barn white i 
right. And this is up here. There's more ground up here. Let it flow around. Now you get some green going here. Green. A little bit of green up in the sky, not too much, just a little bit. Hurry up though. You have to get that little bit of extra wash of green, just a touch of it in the sky quickly. And that's it. Then you get more green and you're going to do the grass area down here like this. And you get some green here and there. Then you're going to get some gold, some golden color. Orange and yellow. Orange and yellow. And we're going to make some orange and yellow wash for the grass and the ground and the foreground here. Right? Now if you do that there, you better get some up here quick. But this is where you might want to wait till later to do this. But I'm trying to go for the gusto here. I'm just trying to get a little bit of that orange and gold color in the sky just so it all blends. Sometimes you're better off waiting to let it dry and then go back and add a little light wash of the gold up top. But we're, we're working pretty quick here. All right, does everybody see how good that looks? This roof over here can have some of that blue mix like that. And that's about it. We did the first wash and you're going to be amazed at how good this is going to look. We mixed all the colors on at one time. We wet the paper first a little bit, dampened some locations here and there. We didn't put water over the whole page, over the whole paper. We put water in some strategic spots up top especially, but then we worked it down over here. We worked it along the roof line so that when we put our wash on it doesn't flow down further because if you wet this first does that make sense everybody that's a big thing you're going to learn here this is one of those big things you better write this down you better write this down if you wet a spot with just clear fresh clean water on this roof edge here let it sit for like 10 seconds 15 seconds and then you come over with a wash with lots of water it's going to stop and it won't flow all the way down on your paper and that is how you leave your barn, the white barn that we wanted here. So you can see we wanted that white barn look of white, beautiful clapboard siding on this barn. We didn't want to get too much paint on there. We wanted to leave it white paper. And that's exactly what we did. And, and you can see how we accomplished that by wetting the paper first along here and over here too as well. And over here we did the same thing. So let's let this dry now. This is the point where you let this dry. If you have any puddles that you see, take some t paper towel. If you have some puddles, take a paper towel and then just touch the puddles with your paper towel like this. And that'll just lift up that puddle like that. Simple as that. Then you take this and you spin it around the other way and you say, is there any other puddles? Yep, there's one there. And then you pick up that one. Anywhere you see puddles, down here. If you're at the bottom of the page, you can just gently touch your paper towel on the bottom edge of your tape where the paper is if there's puddles of water, water down here, and you just lift them up like that. You're going to have a ton of fun doing watercolors like this, using lots of water, lots of paint. All it is, as you can see, doing a few simple things that really will make a big difference. Like I said, if you wet the paper first and then you wet your line along that roof line, you wet this with your brush first with just plain clear water, no paint, before you start putting in the colors, you put that along your roof edge, the paint won't flow down onto your barn. And the same thing over here, you add a little bit of wet clear water over here, you can do it with a brush like this too before you start. Before you start, all you got to do, fresh clean water, you can use a small brush like this and go along this edge and wet that edge. Wet this edge here, here, wherever you need to, and you'll notice that your water won't flow over those areas. And this way you can get a beautiful, gorgeous wash along this whole page, just like we did, without too much hassle. Okay? 
So you're getting the whole enchilada of information here. Hope you like it. This is uh, Extreme Beginners watercolor. So we're just showing you the basics of it, how you can get gorgeous, beautiful washes and control your washes so that they don't go all over the place. And if you have some puddles, we show you how you lift it up with your paper towel. Other than that, you're going to have a fun time with this. So let's come back. I'm going to take a break and let this completely dry. You want to let this wash now completely dry. You could, you could come back the next day and start working on top of this once it's all dry. Or you could use a blow dryer and blow dry it for five minutes or whatever, and it'll dry that way too. Up to you. Totally up to you. You're the artist. You make the decision if you want to use a blow dryer or if you want to let this sit for an hour or two to let it dry. But we will come back in just a second and we'll start working on more washes on top of this. But this is the main wash that goes on. And this is basically your, um, uh, your first wash that is the lighter tonal values. And now we're going to do darks over the top of this. And you'll see how that looks after we take a break. Okay, we'll be right back. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you guys like this video, subscribe right there. There's a subscribe button right down here on the right-hand side below the screen. There's a subscribe button. Have fun. Click that button. This way you won't lose me. You know, if you're just here for the first time, you might not find me again. So at least if you click the subscribe button, you'll my videos are going to come to your YouTube channel and you'll, you'll, you know, you'll be alerted that my YouTube channel has just put out a new video and you'll have that and you won't, you know, lose track of how to find me on YouTube. And also too, you want to be watching these videos every week as we do them and you want to jump in and do them too and work on them. You might not want to work on everyone. You might not like certain subject matter, but for this, for the basics of it, you want to kind of watch every video that we do because you're going to learn all about the colors, the palette, the brushes, the washes, how to sketch, different little tidbits of information. You keep watching over and over. You're going to pick up all those little subtle details that are going to make your watercolors look much better. So we'll be right back and we'll continue on with the uh, darker darks within this gorgeous, uh, lovely, beautiful farm scene. Okay, so now we have let this dry. And you can see I can touch the paper and it's, it's dry. There's no smudging or anything like that. You wouldn't want to touch your paper, actually. You just want to look at it and make sure you can see that there's no shiny, uh, glossy kind of look to your paper. And then you know it's pretty much dry. So be careful. I wouldn't really touch your paper too much. From experience in painting a long, long time, I know when I can kind of touch my paper because I can just look at it and kind of see that there's no shine to it at all. There's, it's just kind of, it looks dull. That means it's dry. If it's dull, if you let it dry overnight, it's definitely going to be dry. But you might have to let it dry a couple hours. But if you use a blow dryer, you can you can dry it off so that there's no uh, sheen or shine to it. With a blow dryer, maybe in five minutes you'll have it all dry with a blow dryer. So now the thing is, with this, let's um, start working on our trees. We have two, we said we talked about it, we had a kind of like a maple tree over here and then we have some pine trees over here so let's work on these so how we're going to do that is basically just um we're going to get some brown so we're going to make some tree colors we have brown and orange and maybe some um some red in there too and then maybe a little bit of blue we'll go with some blue kind of make a brownish grayish color like that. That looks pretty good for, for some tree trunks, right? And it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're just going to take our hand and since everything is dry on our paper, you can rest your hand on your paper and you rest your hand on your paper and then you just put your brush down and you know, you just get some some tree trunks going here. So this is the bottom of the tree trunk. And what I notice is um, we're, we're dealing with the light coming from behind us. So the sun is shining, the sun is shining this way on the scene from our, our backs. So if you can imagine yourself sitting in a chair in front of this barn here in the field and you're looking at this barn, the sun's behind us, the sun's shining behind us and it's shining right on the barn like this. So if you think that and keep that in mind, you're going to notice that 
it'll be a little easier as you paint because you're going to have an idea, okay, that's where the sunlight's coming from. So there's really, the shadows are going to be um, if anything, we're going to see a few shadows against the barn area. So there's going to be some shadows. And I'm taking this brush and just doing those, like we said, the 45 degree angles like this for our branches. And you just get a few in here and there. And we're going to do some splashing as well. You'll see we're going to do that in a second. And there's a few branches that come down this way. Some happy branches kind of once in a while. They go their own way. That's okay. Not all the branches have to go in the same direction. And here we're going to go over this way and do a couple more that way. Then I'm going to do a couple splashes like that. And maybe this is uh, maybe this is the fall. So this is the fall time. So we're going to get some orange. Let's do some oranges and reds here like that. And uh, we'll do the full type of scene here. So a couple splashes, and then I tap along with my finger too here, just to make some leaves. And the fun thing about this is you don't want um, you don't want to fill in the whole tree with leaves and just take your brush and start making the typical way most people. In all honesty, the, the typical way most people will make trees is. They do this. They say, okay, all right, tree is trunk, and then they go like this and do this. So we don't want to do that. We want to splash a little bit and then finger paint and tap, tap the paint just a little bit with your finger so that you leave lots. And let's put a little green in there too. A little bit of green. You want to have lots of um, airspace in there between the leaves and the branches so you can see I'm not filling it all in so as long as you, and you just do a little bit like that and that's fine don't go overboard with it and that's all you have to do just like that so I hope you'll see that that really works out good you know you can go in and get a little more green like that maybe tap a couple more spots but keep it very limited. A little bit of yellow, maybe. Get some yellow in there, too. Splash a little bit. You just take your brush and tap it like that. And that should be fine. Like that. So I hope that works for you. This way you have plenty of, I tend to do a lot of splashing with my technique. I feel that looks good, like that. Not too much filling all in, but lots of airspace in there. Okay, now we're going to do the pine trees. So the pine trees, again, burnt umber. And uh, green, we're going to go with some green, some blue. Blue, green, burnt umber. And we'll do the same thing. We'll come over here and we'll just get those tree trunks in like that. And look at that. We're just a little tree trunk there. And another one here. You can zip one down like that. Again, I always have my hand firmly on my paper, on my paper, because it's all dry. Remember, we let this first wash dry 100%. Then when you do that, you can rest your hand on the paper, get a nice, stable, firm, stable um, platform to work on with your hand resting on the paper, and then you can take your washes and make your straight lines with your trees like this, because your hand's resting on the paper. If you're trying to hold your hand up above the paper like this and try to paint, it's going to really, you're going to have an extremely difficult time trying to learn to paint. So the thing is, always remember, rest your hand on your paper. But you have to make sure it's always dry, your, your paper. 
if you're going to rest your hand on it when you're painting. That's all. That's simple. That's, that's all it is. Okay? So if we remember that one thing, your paper has to be dry. Your paint has to be dry before you go in and start resting your hand on it. And we're going to do blue, brown, blue, brown, and green to get our... Our pine trees. And you can see I'm just doing like the like we said the and you can see my branches are level with a little bit of an up like this. There's the other tree there. And you mix it up, you know, some small branches, some larger branches. Have a fun time with this. Don't stress over this. <laughs> Don't stress. Make a mess. Just make a mess and have a good time. Eventually you're going to get it. Takes, you know, takes a lot of time. you got to just keep practicing at it. Don't stress in the beginning, though. In the beginning you're going to make lots of awful looking paintings. Like just like I did, like everybody else that does this, you're not going to do great paintings when you first start. You have to just realize that, and then you're okay. So you can just see I'm, but again, my branches are more level. They're not like this. The branches here were more like this when I did my branches over here. So pine trees, we're doing pine trees over here, right? These are more, the branches are like this, level, with a little bit of an up swing to them like that. And there's some more down here too, some happy little branches down this way. And you got some happy little smaller branches down here. And uh, that's about where they are over here. And there we have it. You have some... And you flick on a few little brush strokes here and there. Like that. Does that look wonderful? <laughs> it looks fantastic. Splash a little too on there. Tap a few spots. Tap around just a few spots. Tap a few spots. Not everywhere, just a couple things. A couple spots. Like that. Alright, now we're going to use our, our Princeton art brush. And this is the uh, 5 8 inch brush we always use normally on Extreme Beginners and you can get a set of Princeton Art and Brush Company. You can get, you'll see, you can see this, it's like a brown wood looking um, handle brush, synthetic, and they usually come with like maybe three or four different sizes. So look, we have this size too. This comes in the set for maybe like five or six dollars you can get five or six brushes and they all look like this. But a couple are round brushes like this, so you'll go and find these on, online when you have to. You'll shop around, get the best bargain you can, but usually you'll find those multi-packs where you can get some square brushes like this, and then some round brushes like these in the same package, all in one package for like five, six, seven dollars, because you don't want to spend a ton of money when you're first starting watercolors. Simple as that. You're on a budget, you got to watch what you're spending. You don't want to go and spend like $100 on one brush. You buy a package of brushes for like 5 or $10 and you start out. And that's and then maybe in a year or two from now you say, you know what, I'm going to spring and buy a nice brush. And you buy a really fancy one. That's all. Don't worry about it. So we're continuing on here. So this one we said we were going to use though. Let's do the roof here. So we're going to take some of that green and brown mix. And let's get our roof in. We're going to do this roof in a little bit of a darker wash like this. Does that look wonderful? That looks fantastic. And you know, you take some orange in there. Maybe some red. Like that. Mix in some reds. Blues, greens. And then you have to sort a little, mix it in there a little bit with the tree. 
that's fine. Just mix it in, just like that. Don't try to paint all the way through it, right? Just paint a couple things here and there, and you have it. There we go, we're done. Right? Does that make sense? You wouldn't want to start taking your brush and painting all the way through this tree. You'd ruin the tree. So you just tap on it, put a little bit of that color of the roof here and there, just a couple taps of it, and that's all you need, and that will be fine. And then we'll get some more of that color, and we'll go over here and do this one too, this roof over here. All the shingles on these roofs are all the same color, so we'll just use the same colors here, just like that. Look how good that looks. Absolutely beautiful. And let's, um, we're, like we said, the sun is shining this way in front and behind us. If we're sitting in a chair, painting this scene, sitting in a chair, having a wonderful day, we're painting a barn out in the countryside, plain air painting. We know we're out in our chair. We got our easel and we got our chair, or maybe we just we're working in our lap with a sketchbook and we're painting. We are having a wonderful time, and the sun's behind us, so it's not in our face, in our eyes, and we can see really good, and that's what we're seeing right now. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a little bit of a shadow under that roof. Let's take some purple. Purple's the perfect color for shadow. We'll mix up a little bit of this into the purple so it's not too high intensity. And we'll just do this. We'll do like a shadow under there like that. Looks good. And a little bit of shadow under here too. And another little bit of shadow here. Leave that white paper at the top there, like that. And then there's another little bit of shadow under here. Leave some white paper at the top there. That would be best. If you can leave a little bit of white paper, as you can see, at the top. And that leaves us with our shadow. And there's some trim under there. So there's some trim, trim up top. So there's white trim on top, and then there's a shadow underneath that white trim. And then here, the roof is overhanging, so we see the shadow, but we don't see any white trim up top, because that's the roof overhanging. And then here, the same thing, we have some of that. And we'll, we'll actually put some white paint over here, because I think I painted over that. I should have... We'll show you how to fix little issues that you have. But that looks pretty good. And we're just going to keep working right through here, and I think we'll finish up. So when you get those sets of watercolor brushes, a lot of times you're going to get smaller flat brushes like this, and these are great to have too. Can you see these? They're very much smaller. These are perfect for doing small details like windows. So we're going to use our smaller flat brush. We're going to, we're going to do blue, blue and brown and a little bit of red, blue and brown, a little bit of red. And we're just going to do some square windows like this. Like that. Perfect. We'll do a door over here, over there like this, and another window. And there's a window over here, too, like that. That looks good. So now, we have that small square brush we used, just a very, very small to do the windows. Then we're going to go and we're going to use our standard brush that comes with our uh, Prang's Oval 16 set. It's got a good point on it. Let's get a few more details. Let's do a couple. There's a chimney up there and another chimney over here. Maybe with a little top on it like that. And then over, let's see, where did we see some details? Okay. Let's do some blue, some very light blue over here for the hills. Okay, so we have some green 
mixture there. Then we use purple for the more distant hills. So we're going to do that over here. So you do some purple over here. Those are the purple hills in the distance. These greener hills here are closer to us. They're a little darker. Maybe we do a little bit of some shadow, shadow and shading here. This line here, if you make this line on this side of the barn, make it very light and then blot it up a little bit with some tissue so it doesn't get too dark. And you maybe make another little shadow here like that and you can blot it up too as well. Just so you have a couple little lines here, we're going to do some Let's do some stone color. Let's take a little bit of this here and make some stone color. So this is a stone foundation. I would let the darker doors and windows dry first before you do this, but I'm, I'm very uh, careful with my brush so I can kind of get this wash in without worrying too much. Okay, that's the concrete foundation. You can even make this over here too. that. You can make a concrete foundation there and then we can make a little bit of a shadow on this door here just to make it look a little more interesting. You have a little bit of a shadow on there. And I think the only thing left we have to do, and we're having a great time of this, is just we're going to do uh, I see a little bit of this spot here. I take some titanium white straight out of the tube with a very, very pointy brush, the same brush that comes with our set. And I just wanted to add a little bit of white here because we did want to say that we had, it, we had trim here like that. And then the same over here. And this way we had some over here too, like that. Maybe a little bit of white on the tops of the roof here. Like that. Those little bits of tiny bit of light, but you only have to have a little, a few, a little tiny spots of white paint very lightly like this will add a lot of impact to your painting. It'll look like there's some bright sunlight kind of dancing on some of the bits of your painting, some of the parts of your painting. So use them very sparingly though. Don't do not do too many. Maybe I'll do a couple up here, a couple on the branches of the trees, just a few. Like that, maybe one up here. And I think that is fine. So let's leave the painting as it is. Again, we're really mostly working with techniques here. I wanted you to really kind of key in on the techniques that we used here by getting in that really first beautiful wash, letting it dry 100%, and then going back in and adding darker washes like the trees and the roofs and some of the distant mountains here. I feel if you kind of practice this two or three times or four times, this painting in particular, um, or similar, something similar to it, you can you can change things around a little bit if you want. You can make things a little more simple, or you might want to add some things to it. But the main thing I wanted to stress is this is a great way to paint when you do your first beautiful wash on the painting. 
and then you do your darker washes over the top, which is basically the glazing technique. So basically we used here the glazing technique, which is the only thing different with glazing sometimes is many artists that use the glazing technique, they would have painted over the barn. But here I thought we'd leave the barn the white, beautiful white um, of the paper and then paint around it. So, but that's up to you. If you wanted to go with a really light wash over the barn, maybe that wouldn't look too bad. That would look probably good too. But I like the look of the white barn wood. And uh, so I'm hoping you're enjoying this uh, painting and you'll give it a try. And so we'll see you on the next video. And again, thanks so much. And again, if you really like this video and you've had a fun time, please subscribe right here on the right hand side. You just click the subscribe button below. This way you'll get all my videos every week. We're doing great videos every week. I didn't mention that we do scenes like this with barns and country type scenes. We do flowers. We do boats. We do seascapes. We do city scenes. We do, oh, we do figure paintings sometimes. So we do all kinds of interesting subject matter. So if you come back every week, you're going to have a great time. You can try all different kinds of subject matter, different things. You might find you like these type of scenes better. So we're always going to do these once in a while, so you're always going to have these, and then you can practice the other ones too and just get uh, up to speed on all the techniques that you need to learn for watercolor because we use all the same techniques over and over and over again on every painting. So even though the subject matter changes, you might be doing flowers one week, barns the next, boats the next, figure paintings another week. If you're following and watching every week, you don't necessarily have to do every painting, but if you're watching and following... You're going to be learning the same methods and techniques over and over and seeing them, hearing them, seeing what colors we use, what brushes we're using. All that information is great for you to learn if you want to learn watercolor. So if you're really interested in learning, learning watercolor, stick here. I cover all the details, the whole enchilada, all the oodles of granular details that you need to get really good. And I cover it all the time every week. So you're going to eventually get it and do great paintings. And many of you have sent in your paintings and I kind of pat myself on the back a little bit and say, yes, these people are, my, my <laughs> students here on YouTube are following what I'm teaching because they're obviously, they're doing beautiful paintings. I've seen many, many paintings that keep coming through on emails from many of you out there. You know who you are. You send me your paintings and they look absolutely fantastic. So keep up the great work and everyone that's coming up the ranks here, enjoy it, have fun. You're going to learn eventually. And uh, after a couple of years of time, you'll be really doing some great paintings. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Okay. Bye-bye.